This is a precious old film made in 1970. Tokimune Takeda Sensei was still in good health. He visited the Shinbukan Dojo of Katsuyuki Kondo Sensei. Kondo Sensei's younger brother, Masayuki Kondo, now head of the Chiba Prefecture Dojo, is seen beside Tokimune Sensei. The techniques performed in this film are Shihonage from Sankajo and Ikajo. In this tape, we will explain the following techniques from the Ikajo series of the Daitoryu Aiki Jujutsu Hiden Mokuroku. We will show ten variations of Idori, five of Hanza Handachi, and five Ushirodori techniques. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
As you know, Daito Ryu was regarded as a martial art for use in the palace. A samurai could not walk around, but used shiko or knee walking instead. I will demonstrate the technique using shiko. Itori Ippondori. This technique should be performed while breathing out in the same manner as the standing version. Lower your opponent beneath your center and bring your left knee into his side. Then kick to his side. Bring your left kneecap into his armpit and pin him. In the pin, pressure is applied against the outside of his wrist and elbow in exactly the same manner as the standing technique. His arm should be pinned at an angle greater than 45 degrees. You must bring your knee under his armpit. You should pin his wrist at the pulse and his upper elbow joint. Break your opponent's balance, lower your knee, and bring your right knee forward. Grab his wrist at the pulse and bring your knee into his right side. You use exactly the same pin as for Idori Ippondori, which I explained earlier. Use your opponent's attacking key or his strength and add it to your strength. Then pivot on your left knee and move back.
逆腕取り In this technique, your opponent attacks your chest, thus unadori, just as in the standing variation. Before you are grabbed, you execute atemi to his jaw and elbow. At the same time, enter with your left foot. The principles of this technique are the same as the standing variation. For instance, the position and way you hold his joint. In other words, you do not release his joint, but rather control his wrist with your thumb. However, the timing and angle of this pin is different from the standing technique. That is, the angle should be opened more than a right angle to his body. Your knee should be placed under his armpit and you should move in close to his body, as I explained before. You should grab his thumb and wrist firmly and pin him to the mat. You should not do this. You must open the angle between his arm and body. By opening the angle, you will be able to apply pressure against his shoulder joint. You used to execute an atemi and bring your opponent's elbow toward you as soon as you were grabbed. However, in this case, his elbow would surely be broken. To prevent this, turn his elbow to make it easy for him to take ukemi. I will demonstrate again. This technique should actually be applied like this. You execute an atemi, bring his elbow in this direction, and throw him. However, this is dangerous. Therefore, turn his elbow and execute the throw. When you turn your foot, turn your body. When you touch your opponent, unbalance him to the rear in the same manner as the standing technique. Then strike at his carotid artery. This is the original kata, but since it is dangerous, strike at his solar plexus. Then you attack his shoulder instead of the jaw. Move your knee forward, bring your right foot under his armpit, and execute an atemi. Be sure to bring your knee under his armpit.
締め返し Your opponent attacks you with a choke. The principle of this technique is exactly the same as the standing variation. As soon as he grabs you, step a half step to his left and execute anatemi. This is precisely the same as the standing technique. Just be sure that you execute the technique with strong spirit and dynamic movements. Bring him off balance and throw him with your left hand. As soon as you bring your foot back, turn, push against his arm, and throw his body. I'll explain Dakijime. Your opponent comes to choke you. The principle of this technique is exactly the same as the standing movement. To be able to execute an atemi soon after he attacks you, take a step forward with your left foot. Then turn away from his center and execute an atemi in a large movement. Immediately execute atemi. Then, with your left hand, strike the vital point on his upper arm. Then apply Aiki at his shoulder, turn, and simultaneously take him off balance and throw. This is the tsubo, or pressure point, on the upper arm. Attack this point with your hand blade and bend his arm into you. At this point, apply aiki with your shoulder. Turn your foot and hip, turn your hip, arm, and shoulder together and throw him. This movement is basically a munadori technique. Therefore, you should take gyaku udedori. The principle of this technique is exactly the same as the standing movement. When you are grabbed, his attack may consist of a frontal strike, punch, or kick. As you progress, you will execute a punch after being grabbed. In this tape, we will use the frontal strike or shomenuchi.
This is exactly the same as the standing technique, that is, pressure is applied to the outer wrist and the pressure point on the elbow. To throw with Aiki means your technique is effective at all stages. You breathe out in exactly the same manner as for the standing technique. This technique is also the same as the standing variation. When your hands are grabbed, extend key through your fingers. To take advantage of your opponent's unpreparedness, clap your hands. By doing this and bringing your palms up to your face, you bring him off balance. Using the same principle as the standing technique, turn your little finger toward him. Again, like in the standing technique, you should not take his hand. Leaving his hand, turn and extend your hand and fingers and throw him and then strike him with your right hand. You execute the technique before your opponent grabs your hands. You free your hand bring your thumb toward you to cause him to release his hand. You free your hand by bringing your thumb to your right ear. In a similar way, bring your thumb to your left ear using the release movement. Since this is a release technique, you take his hand, unbalance him and throw with the release of your right hand. I will demonstrate once more. Move your right hand like this and you will be able to free your hand. Bring your finger to your right ear like this and your hand will pass through easily. At the same time, use your little finger and unbalance him. Then put weight on the tips of his fingers with your knee to bring him off balance. Then either pin or attack his wrist with your right knee or stab him. I will explain. Turn your palms as soon as your opponent grabs your hands. At that instant, draw your foot back. Don't extend your hands. Put them onto your knees, and as soon as he attacks you, extend your hands. Draw your knee back and grab his wrist, bringing them onto your thighs. Then bring his hands together and withdraw your right knee and pull him to you. At this point, the angle between his knee and hip should not be 90 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle and it is not correct. Bring them forward like this. Then free your hand and put his weight onto both wrists. So this posture is not correct. His hip and knee form a right angle. Be sure to bring his body forward and put his weight onto his wrists and execute a strike to his elbow.
The important point in this technique is as soon as he comes to grab, withdraw your knee, bringing his wrist to your thighs. Pull him back and pin him. In Daitoryu, as you advance to the Sankajo level, you earn Hizajime, the technique to immobilize your opponent with your knee. The Ikajo techniques of Daitoryu include techniques which prepare you for the techniques taught when you advance to the Nikajo or Sankajo technique. The meaning of Hizajime is to stress the importance of using your knees at the Sankajo level. We will show five of the Hanza Handachi Kata. I will explain the Hanza Handachi variation of Haminage. Your opponent grabs your right hand, apply Aiki and unbalance him. At that point, he stands on his tiptoes. Then you bring your thumb toward your forehead and your opponent moves. Next, turn your body and apply pressure against the point on his elbow with your forehead. Pull your right hand toward you. Apply pressure against the point on his elbow with your forehead and tighten the pressure with your right hand. Then throw your opponent with a little finger of your right hand and your forehead. As soon as you are grabbed, apply Aiki. Apply Aiki and cause your opponent to stand on his tiptoes. Bring your thumb toward your forehead. If you try to throw your opponent without unbalancing him, you will be pulled toward him and fall. Therefore, be sure to unbalance him and bring your thumb toward your forehead. You make your opponent move by bringing your thumb toward your forehead. Then execute a body turn and apply pressure against the point on his elbow with your forehead. 
Pull your right hand and throw him with the little finger and forehead. The important thing is to apply Aiki as soon as you are grabbed. Apply Aiki with your right hand. Your left hand, just as in the standing and seated techniques, steers the movement. You use the right hand to apply Aiki and the left hand as your guide. The guide to lead your opponent and the guide to steer him. Throw him after applying Aiki. It is essential to apply Aiki as soon as you are grabbed. As soon as your opponent grabs your left hand, turn using your little finger. Turn using your little finger and sweep away his knee with your right hand. Then, turning your little finger, unbalance him. It is important not to let him grab. In other words, take him off balance as soon as you touch him. You should study how to unbalance him. The hand movement is the same as in the standing, seated, and Hanza Handachi techniques. Be sure to put your hand on your hips when applying Aiki. After you unbalance your opponent with Aiki, throw him from that position. I'll explain. In this technique too, we place our hands on our hips. If you extend your hands, you are applying Aiki against your opponent who has a firm posture and is as strong as a rock. Consequently, the technique will not be effective. His posture will be weakened when you put your hand on your hip. After he is unbalanced, apply Aiki. By pulling him forward, you can unbalance him. Take him off balance and throw. This is Izori. In the beginning, you may stand on your tiptoes. However, sitting straight is more preferable. Apply Aiki and bring your opponent toward you while closing your armpits. Let him come near and immediately unbalance him. This is Izori. It is important for you to extend your elbows and feel your opponent's key. Keeping this posture, throw him after taking him completely off balance. Yeah. 
unbalance him and without stopping throw in this manner I'll explain. Put your hands on your hips in this technique too. As I have warned, if you extend your hands forward, your opponent will grab your hands. This allows him to adopt a strong posture. As a result, you will be unable to apply Aiki to him. If you place your hands on your hips, he will become unbalanced as in Kata Otoshi. As soon as he is unbalanced, apply Aiki. It is exactly the same as the Izori technique. You must not extend your hands as this would allow him to take the most advantageous posture. Be sure to place your hands on your hips and, as soon as he grabs your hands, apply Aiki. Take a half step forward with your right foot, take a large step forward with your left foot and turn. As I have often pointed out, when you can use either hand to apply a temi, be sure to use your right hand. These are the kata for five of the ushirodori techniques. I will explain Tate Eridori. Your opponent grabs your collar. Put your right hand on your head. 
Actually, this is done before you are grabbed. Before you are grabbed, bring your right hand above your head and your left hand into the pit of his stomach. At this point, step in with your right foot while pivoting on your left foot as if drawing a circle. From the other side, as soon as your opponent grabs your collar, move into the pit of his stomach like this. At this point, your head passes under his arm. You strike against his arm using the hand on your head. Therefore, only your head passes underneath and bring your hand toward his wrist. Control the base of his thumb with your thumb and his wrist with your little finger. As I have explained, apply pressure against his elbow with your head and left hand. Then turn your head, elbow, and both hands and lower him under your abdomen at a 45 degree angle. At this point, use your head and the right and left hands together. Place your right hand on your hip and pin his left elbow. Enter in the same manner as in Ipondori. Kick to his side. At this point, your hips must not move up and down. Enter with your left foot. I'll explain. Your opponent grabs both your shoulders. You feel your opponent's intent before you are grabbed and enter deeply with your hand. At this point, your foot passes over the line between your opponent's feet. This is the same as the kirikaishi technique. After you have entered in this manner, advance your foot as far as possible inside the line. As a result, your opponent is unbalanced. Then advance your knee just as in Kirikaishi. Turn your left hand toward his armpit and head. When your elbows are grabbed, apply aiki and bring your opponent forward. Pull your foot back slightly and take him completely off balance. Unbalance him, cause him to raise his heels, separate from him, turn and throw. I'll explain Dakijimedori. When your opponent grabs your hips, 
Cross your feet, bring him toward you, and unbalance him. At this point, strike the vital point on the back of his hand with your left hand. Control his right thumb. Pivot with your right foot. Kick his side with your left foot and throw. The pin is the same as for Gyaku Udedori. I will explain kara otoshi. Your opponent comes to embrace you and you sense his intent. As soon as he grabs you, bring your left hand forward and extend your elbows. Grab the inside of his right wrist with your left hand. With your right hand, take the inside of his elbow and hold his arm. Lower your knee so that your shoulder touches the mat and throw him. Be sure to extend your elbow like this in order to feel your opponent's attack. Continue to apply the technique, exhale, and throw in this manner. This completes the explanation of the Ikajo techniques of the Daitoryu Aiki Jujutsu Hiden Mokuroku. I have tried to remain as faithful as possible to the teachings of Tokimune Takeda Sensei, my teacher and the former headmaster of the art. I have also tried to convey these techniques for the sake of future generations. I will be very pleased if these explanations are useful for those studying Dai Toryu.